Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome everyone to our Monday night Facebook live conversation. Tonight, as you know, every Monday night we do our infidelity recovery series. But because this is a new year, I'm excited because I have a special message for you in 2017 that I'm really excited about. And so as you're coming in, I highly encourage you to share this message. Listen, you have an opportunity to subscribe to this live broadcast, right? So I encourage you to subscribe. I encourage you to share it because this is a message that many people need to know. And so tonight I want to talk to you about a new year, a new relationship, a new you. You know, 2016 for so many people was an amazing year. Uh, many of you accomplished many great goals. You formed wonderful relationships. Uh, many of you got married. Uh, you were able to do things you've never done before. You've traveled to different parts of the world. You've gotten great jobs. But for some of you, it's been a year of hardship, a year of turmoil, a year of crisis. And some of you are excited to be out of 2016, ready to start something new again. But the question becomes, what makes this year new? Is it new simply because it's now January 2nd? 2017 is that what makes it new because if you're bringing your same old self into this new year you're going to make this new year very old once again it's going to be familiar with all of your past experiences so so what makes it new on december 31st at 12 o'clock midnight when the clock struck and all of the fireworks went up did something uh, uh magically majestically change did you become a new person because you entered into a new year no, I don't think so. You were the same person on December 31st, right, that you are today. So, so what makes this a new year? Your decision makes it new. See, I like to fashion every year to clay. 2017 is like clay in your hands. It can be whatever you want it to be, whatever you will it to be, because God has given you a will to do whatever you want. He just wants his, your will to line up with his will. And if those wills line up, then there's nothing that you can have. There's nothing that you can accomplish. There's nothing that you can do, particularly as it relates to your relationship. And so as we move into 2017, there are some things that you wanted to leave in your past, which you've done, but you've got to be intentional about what you desire for this particular year. Now, many of us have a tendency of creating what we call New Year's resolutions. You know, those goals of how much weight we want to lose and, you know, what we want to start doing and what habits we want to drop off and, and what major goals and accomplishments we want to reach. And oftentimes, you know, uh, in the beginning phases of those changes, day two, day three, day four, something happens and we slip right back into normalcy. We slip right back into doing the things that we've always done because they're familiar, because they're comfortable. And so I'm saying that rather than having a New Year's resolution, because if you look at the statistics, upwards of 80% of people who create New Year's resolutions never actually fulfill them. So I want to give you a different way of thinking about 2017. Now, a couple years ago, my wife and I came across an awesome concept uh, for the new year. And rather than coming up with the thing that we were going to do, we were encouraged to create a word for the year. So think about your life. Think about your relationship. Think about your family. What word could you use that you will focus on for the entire year that will represent what you want to be, what you want to accomplish in that new year. So let me give you an example. Uh, last year, my wife and I decided that, you know, because of all of the hard work that we typically do, working late hours and always on the grind at this conference and that conference, we noticed that we weren't spending enough quality time together. We weren't spending enough time with the family. We weren't having uh, the level of quality of life that we had worked so hard for. So in that particular year, we decided that we wanted to make the theme for the year fun. So every single day we would focus on fun, just having fun. Now, of course, the concept is you work hard, you should be able to 
play hard. And so because fun was our theme, we were able to do dates that we've never done before. We've went on vacations that we've never gone on before. I actually fulfilled my dream of going to Dubai, something that I'd always aspired to do for many years. And because fun was our theme, we noticed that we felt lighter. We noticed that we had a new lease on life. We noticed that that, that life just took on new meaning, a new purpose. And so whatever that word is for you, I want you to think about what is your personal word that represents your life. And what word can represent your relationship, right? So 2017, the word of the year for us is family. We want to have a focus on the family. So when you have a word, it's not just about having a word, right? It's about doing things that line up with that word in your daily life so that you can experience things throughout that year. So for this particular year, we as a family, my wife and I, my four girls, right? We are doing a 21-day fast for the family. We're, we're actually fasting together. And every single day, we're eating soup and, and salad, and, and we're coming together during dinner time, and we're doing a family devotion, and we're just talking about different areas of the family that we want to get in order, things that we want to accomplish, things that we want to experience. And what we've noticed just two days in, it's brought us closer together. We've had conversations we haven't had in a long time. We're learning things about each other that we've never known, simply because we're intentional in making sure that we live the word, the theme of family on a daily and consistent basis. So, so what is your word? What, what is it that, that you want for your relationship? Many people have asked me, how do you start fresh when you've been in a relationship for so long and there's been hurt uh, and there's been a crisis that you've experienced, possibly there's been betrayal, uh, there are situations where you no longer trust one another, there's unforgiveness. How do you start over? Well, this is one way of doing that, by being intentional about what you want for the relationship. See, many of us focus on what we don't want, but very few of us know what we actually do one. And so sitting down with your partner and having a conversation and thinking about what you want to experience for the year and whatever that experience is, how can you wrap that into one word? And whatever that word is, what can you begin to do on a daily basis to fulfill it in your life? So a year from now, you should be able to look back and see all the things that you've accomplished, all the things that you've done because you've zoned in on that word. So maybe your word is reconnect. Maybe your word is forgiveness. Maybe your word is romance. You know, maybe your word is level up. <laughs> maybe your word is finances. Whatever it is, it would be great to sit down with your partner and to come up with that word so that you can begin living intentionally in your life. See, we don't believe in having a marriage uh, by default, but having a marriage that's based upon purpose and in a marriage that's based upon design. And so just as you have a word that represents your marriage, have a word that represents yourself as an individual because you are still your own individual person. You have your own self-expression. You have your own personal goals and intentions and things that you want to do with your life. And oftentimes when we get into a marriage and into a relationship, we follow the script that has been handed down to us. And we live our entire lives for everyone else putting our own lives on hold. We pause, if you will, in terms of how we live. And so it's always about the spouse and it's always about the children. And so one day I'll fulfill my dreams, maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, until we live in dissatisfaction, we live in depression, we're full of anxiety, we're full of regret. And so I'm telling you that you don't have to be a woman in waiting. You don't have to be a man in waiting. This can be your year. You can have it all, but you just have to be intentional about what it is that you're doing. The second thing, I want you to focus on after you decide what your word is for all of you couples. I don't care if you're dating. I don't care if you're in a committed courtship, engaged or married. I don't care if you're going through turbulent times and you want things to get better. You've got to put money in your relationship. Now, when I talk to couples who are married, I typically say you got to put money in your marriage. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so there's two things that you need to do as it relates to your money. Listen, you work every week, you're paying bills. Oftentimes, we wind up saving what's left over after we've paid our bills. So in essence, we're putting ourselves last. But I'm saying that you need to create a love budget. You need to put a little bit of money 
in this love account, if you will, and treat it like a bill so that you can take that money and invest it into your relationship. So what does that mean? If that means investing in a book, listen, when was the last time that you and your partner sat down together and actually read a book together that would impact and empower your relationship? Well, I have a great recommendation. It's called uh, The Audacity of Marriage, 10 Principles of Lifelong Partnership. Nice little plug. You can get it on Amazon for $16.95 or on Kindle for $9.99. But it's a powerful book. But if not this book, there are so many other books out there that I can highly recommend. And whatever it is that you're struggling in life with in terms of your relationship, find a book that has the answer to that. Stop going to those who you're familiar with, those who you're comfortable with to get all of your advice. We have a problem, generally speaking, of sharing our problems with people who share our problems. And so rather than getting the answer, we get more of the same problem. And so because other people are hurt, broke, busted, and disgusted, and don't have things going on, miserable with their partner, they want to take their misery and dump it into your relationship. And so we fall for it every single time. But you have to go to people who represent your answer or your solution. So if that can be done by investing in a book, when was the last time that you lost $20 in the laundry room, lost $20 walking down the street. You can't take $20 and invest it in a book that can change the course of your marriage and in your life. Of course you can. So put your money in a book. Put your money in a class. There are all types of classes that you can take online or possibly at your church or at your local community that talks about how to be a better communicator with your partner, how to increase romance and intimacy with your partner, how to, how to, how to plan for the family, how to manage your finances. These are all areas that many of us struggle with on a daily and consistent basis. And if you were intentional in these particular things, it would make a major impact on your relationship. So invest in a class. When was the last time that you spent a day uh, going to a retreat? See, we can spend three to four hours in front of a television screen watching a football game, right? Watching our favorite reality show, watching a marathon of all the shows that we've missed over the last few days. But to take the time and invest four or five or six hours in a full day, one day conference that invests into our marriage, making us more impactful, making us more empowered, making us more enriched. That's something that we can't stand to do because it's just too long and I don't know if I could sit down for all that time and we come up with all of the excuses and all of the rationalizations as to why we can't do what we need. It's so interesting that as people we we what, what is it? We pay for what we want and beg for what we need. So we, we can find a way to spend hundreds of dollars to go to a concert, hundreds of dollars to go to a sporting event, hundreds of dollars to buy gifts for the holidays but when it comes to taking that same amount of money and investing it in your relationship, oh well that's just too much. I don't think it calls for all of that. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. And so we're not willing to do the basics that are necessary to get us where we want. Take your money and invest it in a weekend retreat experience. Go away. You know, they say they say that there's something about going away from your normal geographical location. Because when you think about your environment, let's just say that you're in a toxic relationship and things have been bad for quite some time. You, in essence, become a product of your environment. So if you're in a household that there's strife and there's contention and there's conflict and there's constant arguing and, and, and we're just not on one accord, you're sleeping on the couch, I'm sleeping uh, in another room, we barely eat together, we just don't have the quality of life that we want, but somehow we go off. Uh, to a weekend getaway retreat, and we're in an environment where there are no interruptions, there's no technology, there's no internet, there's no phone calls, right, that we can make, there's no way that we can use social media to connect with the outside world. We're forced, if you will, to spend time with one another and to have conversations and to engage. We're now surrounded by other couples who have similar experiences that are struggling, but they're marriage-minded because they want to work on their relationship, they want something better. And something happens in that environment when we're in the woods or when we're in the mountains or when we're by the water. Uh, there's something spiritual that takes place in the relationship. There's, there's a relational connection that begins to develop because we're outside of our normal environment. And so now we feel the love that we had lost for quite some time. And now we're focused enough to come up with a game plan and, and, and to come up with, you know, a next six month plan or a one year plan of how we're going to change our 
our marriage and change our family and change our individual lives. And then after that awesome weekend experience, we feel in love and we go back home to the same environment that we just got out of. And all of a sudden, after a few days, after a few weeks, we slip into the same habits and the same routines and the same things that we've done. And now we're fighting again and now we're struggling again and we're wondering how and why this is happening because our environment reminds us of our past. The same way, the same situation, the same pictures on the wall, the same identifiers that remind me of the hurt that I just came out of. So, so what do I do? That's why they say when you go away and you experience newness, when you come back, you've got to bring that newness back into your environment. You've got to change things around, rearrange the furniture, paint the walls, put new pictures up, just have new symbols, if you will, that represent the newness that you just created in that weekend experience so that you can live it every single day. It's not something you experience as you took a short retreat. And let me just say this. If you don't invest in your marriage, if you don't spend quality time and money doing for your marriage what it requires, if you don't take the time to retreat, at some point you will just throw your hands up and just want to retreat. Do do you get that? So you need to be able to do that consistently. And so whether you're uh, investing money in going on a date, forget the movie and the dinner. That's so typical. That's so routine. Act like you're a tourist in your own neighborhood and research what things there are to do. Go places you've never uh, been. Hook up or meet up with other couples groups, right? Find out uh, uh, things that are taking place that you've never been exposed to because as you're experiencing new things, you begin to reconnect with your partner in a new way. And you begin to learn them in a way that you've never learned them before. I often give that example that some of you may have heard about the moon to earth syndrome. So when you're looking at the moon at night, whether it's a full moon or a half moon or a crescent moon, in essence, you're just seeing one face of the moon, one side of the moon, that if you wanted to see the other side or the other face of the moon, you would have to travel into space and look down from a different angle to see the other face of the moon. Well, that other side or other face is known as the dark side of the moon. And so all of us have a dark side, if you will. Now, when I say dark, I don't mean sinister or evil or wicked. But when I say dark side, I'm referring to that undiscovered side, that side of uh, my partner that I've never known before because we're so stuck on the same routine. We sleep on the same side of the bed. We go to work the same way. We eat the same basic meal for dinner every single week. We go to the same uh, service every Sunday and sit in the same pew and we go to the same restaurant afterwards with the family and stick to the same routine. And I'm saying you've got to do something different. You've got to do something new. And as you begin to have these new experiences, all of a sudden it brings newness into the relationship. But that only happens when you begin to take the time and the money and invest it in your marriage. So whether it's a book, whether it's a class, whether it's a seminar, a conference, a weekend retreat, whatever it may may be, a date night, you've got to do these things regularly so that you can begin to see a breakthrough in your relationship. The last thing I want to focus on is, is the fact that in 2017, you've got to make a decision about who you are going to choose to be. Now, most people, when we're focusing on goals, we're focusing on what we want to have, right? I want to have a new car. I want to have a new house. I want to get a new job. I want to experience, you know, I want to have a new relationship. All the things that we want to possess. So we're always focused on the end result. We always focus on the, on, on, on the thing that you get after you go through a process. So if I can have this, the only way that I can have this is by doing that. So we focus on what we want to have first, and then we focus on what we have to do in order to have that particular thing. And then we think, well, if we do it, you know, this is how I'll feel once I have it. So we go from having to doing to being. And that is the path of those who fail. Having, doing, and being is the path of failure. The path of success. If you look at those individuals who have succeeded in life, they focus on being, 
doing and having. In essence, yes, I want a house and I want a car and I want a great relationship and it requires that I do X, Y, Z. And if I do X, Y, Z and get what it is that I want, I will be or feel this particular way. But you've got to focus on who you're going to be first. Your being is the most important. Keep in mind, you are not a human doing. You are a human being. And if you're always focused on what you need to do, well, the reason why you struggle doing what you know you need to do, the reason why you don't live, you know, all the way through your resolution, the reason why you quit on your goals is because you're not the person you need to be in order to do what you need to do to have what you need to have. Think about it. So I could say, you know what, I want to lose 30 pounds and I'm going to do it in 35 days. And here's the list of items of the things that I have to do. But based upon who I am today, I struggle with procrastination, you know, I'm complacent, I don't like rolling out of the bed at four o'clock in the morning. I don't do what healthy people do because I've been thinking and operating as an unhealthy person. So it's hard to just do something. So the key is I've got to focus on who I choose to be. I got to focus on becoming the best person that I can be. So if I want a great relationship, right, and I want to have romance, and I've got to be romantic. If I want to have great community communication, then I got to focus on being a great communicator. Because if I am a great communicator, if I am a great lover, if I'm great at my finances and I'm focusing on my being, then it will impact my ability to do. Now, once I begin doing the right thing consistently and long enough, it will then take me into having. So you've got to be, then you've got to focus on doing. And once you're doing the right thing long enough, the Bible says, don't get weary and well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not the reaping is what the have that is the end so you know in order for things to work you've got to put in the work but in order for you to put in the work you have to have the right mindset you've got to have the right frame of mind the frame of being you've got to have the right state of being and so one of the things in closing that I posted on Facebook a couple of days ago was what is the one emotion that you want to leave in 2016. And we got over a hundred different responses. And many people said, I want to get rid of my depression and I want to get rid of my anxiety and I want to get rid of my complacency and my self-righteous uh, belief and my bitterness and my rage. And but, but of all of the terms that we heard, the one word that kept repeating and reverberating again and again and again was fear. That for some reason, people are living in fear. They're either fearful of success, they're fearful of failure, they fear rejection, you know, they fear uh, uh, looking stupid, they fear, you know, not living up to people's expectations. There's all types of things that we are struggling with in the area of fear. And fear is the one thing that has stifled our progress. Fear is the one thing that keeps us from engaging with our partner. So, so we want something more, right? We want to reconnect. We, we want the love and, and we want communication and we want the level of intimacy that we once had. But we fear, you know what, if I open up, I may be hurt again. So the wall goes up. If I begin to communicate and I may be judged for what I say, so, so the wall goes up. And so we begin to have all of these thoughts, right, and conversations in our mind that we begin to rationalize and justify why we do what we do. And it further imprisons us and keeps us from getting what it is that we want to have. And so rather than pointing the finger at our partner and always focusing on what he needs to do and what she needs to do, we need to take a look at ourselves and focus on who we need to be. And regardless of how I may feel, regardless of what thoughts are going on in my mind, I've got to get past those emotions that are crippling me and do it anyway. So for all of those that are in fear, there's a phenomenal book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. That regardless of, of what may be holding you back, regardless of your past failures, regardless of how many tries you or attempts that you've had that just didn't work out, you know, we're reminded of Thomas Edison who attempted to create the light bulb 10,000 times they say he failed before he got it right. But it's all perception. What, did he actually fail 10,000 times or he, did he discover 10,000 ways that did not work? 
So if you have the right mindset and the right perception as you go into 2017 and, and, and understand that, you know what, I can have these emotions that are holding me back and do it anyway. I don't have to wait till they're removed because I've been struggling with these things for all of these years. What makes me think? Because I'm in a new year and I snap a finger that the emotion is gone. So if these emotions are gonna be here, I'm gonna turn them on its head, use them to my advantage and do it anyway. You gotta be like the eagle. One thing about the eagle, when the eagle embraces the storm, it doesn't run for shelter like so many other animals, but it embraces the storm and the storm elevates the eagle to a higher level and that eagle begins to soar. One thing about an eagle, an eagle has the ability to see two miles in any direction it looks in. So when it's about to pursue its prey, it locks in on what it wants and then swoops down to the ground or swoops into the water and seizes its prey, breaks it up and takes it back to the nest to feed its family. So before the eagle could be able to seize it, it had to be able to see it. You see what I'm saying? So you've got to have vision. You've got to have a focus on what it is that you want. You've got to realize that, you know what, if I don't have a vision for 2017, then 2017 is going to be just like 2016, just like 2015 and every year that came before that. There will be no change. There will be no transformation. But this year is different because I've made a decision about what it's going to be. I've made a decision about what I'm going to have. I've made a decision about who I'm going to be. And because I'm focused on who I need to become, becoming the best version of myself, I'm going to get whatever I so desire. And that's what it is. And so every single morning I wake up and I say, today belongs to me. It must submit to my will, for my will is in perfect alignment with the will of God. See, that's operating with authority. That's operating as a victor and not being a victim. And when you realize that everything that is in your life, you created it. The success that you experienced, you created it. The failure that you've experienced, you created that too. It was all according to your will. Now, it may not be according to your want. We don't want failure. We don't want crisis, but oftentimes we either consciously or unconsciously created because of our own will. So when you tap into who it is that God made you to be and you have a divine revelation of who in fact you are and you stop focusing on situations and circumstances and conditions and setbacks and limitations and my mother didn't raise me the way I needed to be raised and I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks and it's because of my color and it's because of my gender and it's because of all of these other things. When you stop focusing on all the things that could potentially hold you back and look within yourself, and know that there's a kingdom within you. There are laws and principles that are in you that if you were to tap into them and have a knowingness of how to use those keys, then you can have whatever it is that you so desire. So 2017 is going to be my year because I will it to be. And I got a powerful Bible and I got a powerful book of laws that teach me how I need to get whatever I want to get according to his will. So let this year be the greatest year that you've ever had. Let this year uh, represent the greatest marriage that you've ever had. Let this year represent the greatest foundation for your family that you have ever had. But it all starts with you because you are the foundation of it all. I say this all the time in closing, that the lowest common denominator in every relationship that you enter into is you because you take you everywhere you go. You are the common denominator. So if you want a great family, be a great person. You want a great relationship, be a great person. You want to experience newness in your, in your life. You want to travel the world. You want promotion on your job. You want increase in your finances. Be the person that you need to be. And everything is a result of your being. So no longer are we focusing on what we want to have and then what we want to do and what we need to become. Understand that you are not a human doing you are a human being, and when you make the commitment to being the best version of yourself, then the world is yours. Love you guys. I hope that this message encouraged you. 
I want to encourage you to get the copy of this book. We're going to be starting our book club discussions every single Thursday starting this week. The Audacity of Marriage. You can go to Amazon.com and pick up your copy today. If you are not a part of our group, The Audacity of Marriage on Facebook, request to be a member because these conversations are going to be had in that group and you have to be a member of the group. Listen, subscribe to the videos. Share this video. Share it on your wall. Share it with your friends. If you have any questions about what we've discussed here tonight, inbox me. If there are topics that you want us to discuss regarding being single, dating, in a committed courtship, marriage, divorce, sexuality, communication, whatever it is, send me an inbox. If you're going through a situation in your marriage and you're looking for counseling, reach out to us. Couples Academy is here. You can go to couplesacademy.org. That is couplesacademy.org. Love you guys. See you next week for another great live broadcast. Good night.